This year, 2008, is the United Nations International Year of the Potato. To mark the occasion, the Lost Tidy Town Committee is producing a DVD on the humble potato. We are very happy to have Trevor Sargent TD, Minister for Food and Horticulture, involved in this project. This is our fourth DVD in a series on the environment, targeting the interest of the local school children. Well, here we are in Baldurgan Farm. Just want to thank David and Martin Garrigan for showing us the reality of commercial potato growing in Ireland. We're not too far from Ballybockle and, and Lusk here, and this is really the heartland of potato farming in Ireland. And it's farmers like this that ensure that we continue to have a supply of potatoes in our shops. And worldwide, the potato is seen as the fourth most important food crop. And that's why the United Nations has asked Ireland, because we're such an important potato growing country, and Peru, where the potato was first discovered, being grown by the Incas many, many thousands of years ago. And those two countries, Ireland and Peru, are leading the world on behalf of the United Nations to celebrate and promote the International Year of the Potato. And as we see behind us, we're just getting going in the potato growing season. Uh, this is now March. It's still a bit cold, but the harrowing is going on. The planting will be going on later today. And we, we will have potatoes uh, in, our, in our shops from this crop um, in the summer. And so I think the lesson for us here is that the potato is good for people to eat. Uh, it's also an important part of Irish farming and my job as Minister in the Department of Agriculture is to ensure that the farmers get a decent price so they can continue to grow potatoes for all our benefit. Well anybody who grows potatoes knows that you cannot sell every potato you grow. Sometimes they are damaged in the harvesting process, sometimes they're too small or indeed too big for the market. So they have to be graded. And that's a process in itself where they're put along a conveyor belt and where they are picked off and where, for example, any damaged potatoes are diverted away from the good potatoes. And only the good potatoes then go to market to be sold in the shops. Well, here we are on Bergen's farm in Ballybockle, not too far from Lusk. We have Tim Bergen here. Tim, maybe you could tell us a little bit about what's happening behind us with the potatoes now. What's happening here today is we're grading potatoes out of store. Uh, these are potatoes that were harvested last October. They were put into cold store for the last six months. We're taking them out of store and we're separating the bad potatoes from the good potatoes. Um, this potato here has a growth crack in it, as you can see. It was a problem that we encountered last summer with the wet weather. It caused the potatoes to grow too rapidly and crack. This potato is not suitable for selling in the marketplace. Uh, however, this potato is. This one is perfect. Well, here we are just north of Murtas on the old N1 road in Lusk and across the road is where the old workhouse was built and in that workhouse many people who depended on the potato for a living found that they had no food in the 1840s when the potato blight struck and that was something which really devastated the whole country including this area of North County Dublin and as a result many people who were depending on just one food, the potato, were left without any food at all because the blight destroyed their crop, not just in one year but over a number of years. And as a result many not only died of starvation but others died of cholera and the spread of disease um, devastated and indeed lost the lives of about a million people and another million had to emigrate then to America, England, Australia, all over the world. But here we're in the cemetery and this cemetery is a sacred ground where people were buried having died of starvation and died of cholera and other diseases in the workhouse where they were coming for their last hope 
to live for themselves and their families. And we can see in the inscription here, a tall a green and a dini a four boss, and it is in Irish, as most people in the country spoke Irish at that time. And it says, Lucht Kimrocha na mocht a gaunter valley on Ridera the hog on Crossshaw, a green and a ninev a tall eilica sa relic show. Suvnus shiri the anonymous. Amen. Ni deg a hoch deg. 1918. And in English that translates as the guardians of the poor in this district of Balrodri built this cross in memory of the people who are buried in this cemetery. Eternal rest grant unto their souls. 1918. But well, as we know, the potato is very important in the history of Ireland. During the famine, people were so dependent on the potato that when the blight came, that was it. Many people had nothing to eat. Before that time, people were able to live a healthy life on 10 potatoes a day. That was what a healthy man would eat. And we know from doctors in America that when Irish people emigrated, they were far healthier than people who were not eating potatoes who had come from other countries. So these 10 potatoes in this basket was the daily diet of a healthy man. But of course, in August, the 20th of August, 1845, in the Botanic Gardens in Glasnevin, the potato blight was detected. And we know after that, many people died because their crops failed. And that's because they were depending on one variety of crop, the lumper potato. But there are over 5,000 varieties of potato. This chart here just gives a few of the better known varieties that many of us would know. The one we choose mostly in Ireland is the rooster. That's the most popular one that people buy in the shops. But there are many others. Uh, this is the Colleen potato. And the Colleen potato is being grown in many national schools around the country for this, the International Year of the Potato at the moment. And then there's a very unusual one here, which is a blue potato. And not only is the skin blue, but actually the flesh is blue. And it's a novelty, you might say, because we're used to having white uh, potatoes on our plate. But this is a blue one, so that's a change. And there are many varieties. Some are early and some are late potatoes. Uh, some are smaller and bigger and some taste differently as well. So many of those varieties are suiting different climates around the world as well. So we, we, we grow in Ireland the rooster a lot. Uh, we also grow the rush queen, of course, which is a lovely flowery potato. And there are many that we can choose from in the chart that I have in front of us here. Well, to celebrate the International Year of the Potato, every primary school in the country was sent a box just like this. And inside this box, if I can just open it, we'll see a potato growing kit and all the parts everything we need to grow the potato to start apart from water and light of course and inside there are instructions there is a 40 litre bag of compost thanks to the earthworms who had a big role to play in making that compost as well and we actually have two little seed potatoes and those seed potatoes have really started to grow there you can see they're, they're they can't wait to get out of that box now those two seed potatoes are going to be grown in two two grow bags and these grow bags will be filled with the compost and then we will be able to follow their progress and indeed follow the instructions and inside each box also there were a couple of charts which again make the point that there are many varieties of potatoes. When it comes to meeting the spuds, it's a very big family. Right, well we have everything we need here now and Sam is going to help me because we're going to plant the potato starting off with the compost which we're going to divide 
between the two growing bags. And if Sam holds that steady, we'll just fill a bag with a roughly half of the compost. That should be about right. Um, and then we go to the next bag. Well, we've put the compost into the bags and the instructions which came with the kit say that every pupil involved should also be asked to bring in a litre of soil from their garden. So about 15 litres of soil per bag then will be added to each growing bag to give the potato a local soil to grow in, which gives it the flavour and gives you a good um, local potato then to eat at the end of the growing season. So Sam and myself, we, we, we've been out in the garden, we've got the soil and we've mixed in the soil with the compost. So we'll just pour in our last litre uh, just to demonstrate. You want to pour that one in, Sam, and then continue to mix in the local soil with the compost that came with the potato kit and then we'll be ready to plant our potatoes. So what I have in my hand here is a seed potato. Now a seed potato is different from a potato that you would have for your dinner because it has been examined carefully to check that it will grow properly as a seed and doesn't have any problems with it, which could happen if you were to grow a potato from the supermarket, you might say, that you buy for dinner. So this seed potato is going to be planted, but before it's planted, I'm going to suggest that we chit it. Now what that means is that you show it the light and you see where the sprouts come out, and then we can see which way is the right way to plant it up or the wrong way to plant it up, because the sprouts will be looking for the light well, this is what happens when seed potatoes are left in the light and they really want to get growing. So they start putting out sprouts and looking for the light. As you can see, if they can't find the light, they just keep on growing. And when we see these sprouts coming out, we know which way is it is to plant them right way up. Because if we plant them like that, of course, they will try to look for the light and they will go around in a circle and come out as if they're doing, they were doing a U-turn. Um, so we plant them in the, in the soil like this, and this will mean that they will be able to grow quicker as they'll be facing the right way to get to the light. So we're going to plant the potato, and that means really making a hole about six inches or 10 centimeters so that the potato can sit at the bottom of that hole. And then we tuck it up there nicely with the compost all around it, press it down so that it starts to grow in the compost. Right, I'm going to give Sam a hand here to plant his potato seed, and that means really getting down deep so that you make a hole that will be deep enough, hopefully around about the six inches, push it down there, Sam, that's it. That's it, now we we'll just fill in the compost around it, press it down so that it's really home and dry before we water it and eventually harvest all the new potatoes. But these potatoes have been planted much earlier than the potatoes that we normally see planted out in the fields and in our gardens because we want to get a harvest before the schools close for the summer holidays. And that means that we have them indoors from their planting time, which was normally around February in the schools, and they won't be put outside until April. That means we're putting them beside the window and Sam is going to start them off in their new life indoors here with a bit of watering from the watering can. Perfect. That's great. Now we put them beside the window and give them the light. These potatoes were planted earlier than the potatoes that Sam and myself just planted there. And it, they show how it's very important, if possible, to 
plant the potato the right way up. And that's the advantage of chitting because these potatoes here weren't chitted. So we didn't know which way was up and which way was upside down. And this potato, as it so happens, was planted the right way up on the same day as the other one. But because it was the right way up, it headed straight for the light without any problem. Whereas this one was planted upside down and the, the shoots had to, first of all, grow down before they did a U-turn and came back up looking for the light and they came up in different spots around the compost away from the seed potato that was planted there in the middle. So it just highlights the importance of chitting the potatoes next year when we come to plant our potatoes in an egg box, shown the light so we see the shoots where they're going to come out before we plant them. Well we've come a long way with the story of the potato but not as far as the potato has come itself, because the potato originated far away in South America, on the shores of Lake Titicaca, long before Christ was born. People, the Inca people of South America, were cultivating the potato. And it was when the Spaniards came to South America that they brought the potato back to Spain, where it was first used in a hospital in Seville, as a health food, as a medicine indeed, and it was because it was so healthy that it spread throughout Europe and how we in this country doubled our population by eating the potato during the years before the famine. So the potato is a big part of our past, but it's a very important part of our future as well because the extra 100 million people being born onto this earth every year are going to need healthy food like this. And that's why we are encouraging more people to grow potatoes and also to eat potatoes because they are a very good food and a very important part of the world's population being fed in the future. Mm -hmm.